Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Bienvenidos. We're just letting people get settled. We'll start in a moment. Permitiendo que la gente se desplague, entonces va a ser un momento. Maricela, go ahead and let me know when you Señor, think uh, folks are settled. Cuando piense que la gente ya está lista. Alrighty, there are still some folks that are trickling in, and to our Spanish interpreter, I did just send a respond. message. Just really quickly, we will uh, provide the uh, translation instructions in just a moment. I'm sorry, I thought we started already. Yeah, we'll we'll ask you to unmute yourself in just a moment so that we can okay. provide. I'll, the... I'll mute myself if I do. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'm Sophia Pagalatis with the City of Fresno, Sophia and Pagalatis. I welcome you to our meeting. Y bienvenidos a esta reunión. We have some. I'm gonna bring up some slides and we'll go through some Vamos logistics. A unas statisticas. Statisticas, more dicho. <clears throat> so, Maricela, would you like to walk us through some logistics? Este, explicar. Maricela, you are muted. You know, after a year of this, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I had no clue. Okay, thank you. Uh, as some of you may have noticed, translation services are available this evening. Uh, we do encourage all participants to join a language channel in order to uh, communicate with all participants. So once that's actually been activated, which it hasn't been activated at this point, so it won't appear at this moment, you'll go ahead and select the interpretation globe that will appear at the bottom of your screen and then choose your preferred language. This evening's options are English, Spanish, Hmong, and Punjabi. And at this point, if we could please have our Spanish interpreter please unmute themselves and provide those same instructions, we'd greatly appreciate it. I'm sorry, I thought I was unmuted. There you en, go, you're unmuted now. Están las elecciones de su idioma preferida. Están inglés, español, Punjabi, y Hmong. Entonces opriman en donde está su idioma preferida. Thank you. And now if our Hmong interpreter could please unmute themselves and provide those instructions. Nyo jong jong shi ta ta ni shi ra lo kong pei in da lu zhong shi ta mo no yi hai de ni sa ta ko pei cha lu mong ta ni ga zhong da ko wo lu lu ni hao ka mo no pei mo mong cha lu mo mei te mo pun jia bi zhong ne hu shi yi hai de ni sang long ne ye lu pong ni a lu pong de ni zhong ne mo zhong lu hong wo pei yo cha jiao lu mong zhong ne mo no wo zhong da thank you thank you and finally if we could please have our punjabi interpreter please unmute themselves Sashrikaldi, swagat hai tumharda aaj di meeting which asi zoom lay interpretation feature on karangi. Aaj di meeting interpret hovegi English, Spanish, Mang, ati Punjabi pasha which. Jekar tusi computer te ho, ta tuhanu screen de niche globe the sign de kheka. Jekar tusi apne phone te ho, ta tuhanu screen de niche sajje hath te te nishan di khai den ke. Ina te click karo, ati jedi pasha tusi bol de ho, usnu select karo. Jekar kise vi karan karke original speaker di awards us interpreter to zyada hai jisnu tusi sun rahe ho ta tusi kise vi vaat original audio ni mute kar sakte ho shukriya ji thank you and so i'm going to go ahead and activate those channels and give folks just a couple of moments to be able to join and so you should have just received a notification at the bottom of your screen and so again, you'll go ahead and hit that interpretation globe and select your preferred language. 
And that goes for all participants. All righty, there we go. Thank you. Uh, a couple of other items before we begin. Tonight's meeting is being recorded and publicly broadcasted, and it will be posted to the Transform Fresno website, as well as the City of Fresno's Housing Element website. Uh, and it is streaming on the CMAC government channel, as well as the City of Fresno's Facebook page, as well as their YouTube channel. And so participation in this meeting will be considered consent to be recorded. And finally, I know that we may have been using Zoom for a really long time, but as we just saw, sometimes you forget to hit a couple of buttons or you don't know where to find them. So during uh, certain parts of the portion, if you wanna go ahead and raise your hand and ask a question or provide a comment, if you're joining us using your computer, the desktop client uh, or the app, then you'll go ahead and hit that raise hand button. Otherwise, if you are dialing in tonight, you'll go ahead and press star nine on your phone. Again, that's star nine if you're joining us by dialing in. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it back to Sophia. Thank you very much, Maricela. Um, welcome again to uh, all of you who have taken time out of your schedule to join us tonight. This is the third scheduled Here to Stay community study session. Um, we actually ended up having technical difficulties at our second one, which was on July 29th. And we appreciate the patience of all of you who, who were there with us. And we have rescheduled the topics for that item, um, for that meeting, excuse me, to August 26th. So, that's how our schedule is being modified, but tonight is as planned, August 12th meeting. Uh, we're going to be talking about mobility and connectivity and also regulations and legal protections related to the Here to Stay report. I also wanted to do a little bit of quick introductions as far as who's here in the room from the city of Fresno. Um, various staff from the planning, public works, and facts departments are here with us, and uh, planning staff will be helping to facilitate breakout sessions, so if you could, uh, planning staff, give a wave, hello, um, you can do more introductions in your breakout sessions. I would also like to highlight any anti-displacement task force members that are here in the room. If you're here, please wave. Sorry, I don't have a great view of everyone. Um, and we would now like to learn more about you. Drew, our pollster, will you take it away, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. So we just had a poll come up in front of your screen and we wanna know who's, who's here. So what best describes you? You have several options there. Do you consider yourself a resident, a member of a public agency, member of a nonprofit agency, maybe a community advocate, a developer, a business owner, a landlord, a tenant, or other. Give everybody an opportunity um, to select. I think last time, um, the first time we had residents was the number one, and I forget, does anybody remember what was number one last time? I know we didn't have the meeting all the way through. No. Sometimes sometimes two weeks feels like six months, doesn't it? All right. Indeed. All righty, I'm gonna give folks eight more seconds so that it's a minute long. I see we have a couple of folks that are still submitting their, their answers. It's coming in, you usually get the first quick results and then slows down. All righty, so I'm gonna end that poll and I'm gonna go ahead and share the results so that Drew, you can read them all. Awesome, all right, can everybody see it? Looks like we have nonprofit agency is taking the lead this evening, 33%. Uh, and then tied, we have resident and community advocates, um, landlord, and oh, and then other is uh, coming in. That'd be in the third place, technically fifth. And then tied landlord and tenant um, with 7%. That's a good balance. Okay. Thanks, Drew. Mm -hmm. 
So our agenda for tonight is similar to our previous meeting. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of background. Um, we're going to uh, make sure you all know how to comment on the Here to Stay report, uh, take any questions, and then focus on our policy topics for tonight which are mobility and connectivity, regulations and legal protections related to housing. And then we will go into our breakout sessions. Uh, you'll have about 45 minutes there if we time this right. And then we'll come back together and report back as a group. And we hope to get you um, home and finish with this by 7.30. Ground rules. Drew, would you like to tell us about ground rules? Absolutely. So we're here to hear from each other and provide um, feedback and learn as much as we possibly can. So in order to do that, we want to make sure that we have um, a opportunity for good conversation. That means we need to respect the meeting and each other throughout the entire process. In order to do that, we should listen to each other um, and make sure that everyone has a chance to participate and that no one dominates. Um, so your facilitator may ask you to allow others to talk. Um, and I also encourage you to just keep tabs on on uh, how long you're speaking. And then the best way to do that is to take turns talking. So to make sure you listen to people and allow others to speak. And when you do talk, uh, please try to stay on topic. And when you have something to say that may be different from somebody else, we wanna seek unity and not separation. And the best way to do that would be we can disagree with each other, but we can do that without being disagreeable. Thanks, Drew. So the purpose of our meeting tonight is to increase understanding of the policy ideas in the Here to Stay report. It's a community study session. We named it that because it's, it's about studying together, really. Um, and a key objective is to identify the need for more information. And of course, to make sure you all know how to comment on the report. So a little bit of background for context. Um, how did the Here to Stay report come about? Well, there are um, several recently adopted plans um, adopted by the city that um, call for investment in neighborhoods that have historically not had investment for a very long time. And we've learned that um, you know, infusion of dollars into underinvested neighborhoods can cause displacement and can price existing residents out of the neighborhood. So um, all of these plans call for the study of displacement um, and uh, call for policy actions to reduce or prevent it. So that's why we are here this evening. And additionally, Transform Fresno, um, which is an investment program in Southwest Fresno, Chinatown and downtown, calls for a displacement avoidance plan. So already the city of Fresno's planning framework calls for us to really um, pay attention to displacement, learn about where it's happening, and then figure out how to reduce or prevent it. So in order to start that process, the city commissioned the Thrivance Group, a consulting group, to study displacement and to recommend policies or programs to reduce or prevent it. And that um, is all contained in the Here to Stay report. It is currently in its public review draft stage and it contains 46 different policy ideas organized into seven different topics. And we're going to be talking about two of those different topics tonight and a total of about uh, 10 policies. To make sure you know where to get your hands on this report and how to comment it on it, um, you can get um, a, a download of the report in English, Spanish, or Hmong on the transformfresno.com website. Or you can write to us at transformfresno at fresno.gov. You can send a letter to City Hall. And the public comment period for this report, it opened in June and it's going to close on September 3rd. There's also a survey that's online and hard copies are available that um, we'd like you to fill out when you feel that you have completed your review of the entire report. So again, that's online at the same place, transformfresno.com 
or there are hard copies available, these are the locations where you can get hard copies of the report and the survey and comment cards. So what is the process for um, these recommendations? Well, we're in our public comment period until September 3rd. Then the public comments, survey results, et cetera, will all be compiled and presented to the Anti-Displacement Task Force in September or October. They will make recommendations about priorities to the Planning Commission and City Council, which will happen later in the fall. And then the council will decide which policies to pursue. And there could be some policies that could be implemented rather quickly, while other policies may take more time to develop. So we have outlined for you here just really roughly a policy development period, um, and then policy adoption period. These are very kind of loose, just to kind of give a general idea. So with that, I'm going to briefly describe each of the policy recommendations that we are going to consider um, tonight and that you'll dig into more deeply in your breakout sessions. But I wanna stop right there and just um, see if there are any questions about the, the process, kind of the big picture that I just outlined. Any questions about that? Sophia, there is one question in the chat um, okay. from Brandy. Could we get a copy of the PowerPoint to reference this information? Yes, we will um, post that. These PowerPoints uh, should be posted on the Transform Fresno website as well as uh, fresno.gov uh, and um, at the housing element site. And we could probably send it out to you as well, the PowerPoint. So we're happy to do that. Okay, anything else, Maricela? I'm not seeing anything else in the chat and I see no hands up. And just as a reminder, you can use the raised hand button or you can go ahead and dial star nine if you're dialing in this evening. Okay, yes, great. Okay, I'm going to continue on. And what I'm going to do is briefly describe the um, policies that are the subject of our meeting tonight. And they relate to mobility and um, legal protections. And um, then when you go into your small groups, you can talk about them in more depth. So I'm just going to um, briefly describe them here. Uh, the first one is about cargo and freight prohibitions and a revenue tax. And the goal of this policy is to reduce the environmental hazards and health impacts of freight movement on low-income communities by doing a couple of things, prohibiting transit, storage, and maintenance facilities, and cargo freight movement through low-income communities and by considering uh, the establishment of a freight revenue tax that would fund community-based programs and projects in neighborhoods most impacted by freight movement. The next mobility policy idea is a public works prioritization and mobility justice program. The goal here is to ensure that low-income communities share in the benefits of active transportation investments. Active, active transportation investments are um, investments such as new bike paths, new pedestrian facilities, uh, facilities that would connect to transit. And um, what this policy is advocating is that before that kind of investment is made in a neighborhood, basic critical infrastructure should be provided. So um, before putting a, a new shiny, you know, class for bike path in a neighborhood that's missing sidewalks, invest in the sidewalks first, or perhaps if um, signals need to be upgraded, traffic signals. That's the idea behind this policy. It also speaks to minimizing the disruption of long construction timelines on local merchants and residents um, by providing stipends to merchants and considering incremental construction rather than you know, a, a very prolonged construction period. Finally, this policy um, recommends modifying the public works equity-based prioritization system that they currently use 
to include a displacement burden analysis and to implement a moratorium to provide time for this analysis. Looks like we're having more, more people enter our meeting. They're still trickling in. Um, and the third additional policy is, is similar. It's, um, it, the goal is to address deferred maintenance in Southwest Fresno and other communities experiencing displacement and to, to address the deferred maintenance on an expedited schedule um, so that you know, the very basics in one neighborhood or in our um, you know, lower income and underinvested neighborhoods get the deferred maintenance that they need um, prior to investing in active transportation infrastructure. So um, those are the mobility related policies. And the next set of policies are related to regulations and legal protections uh, related to housing. The first one is a uh, residential eminent domain uh, moratorium for economic development. And the goal is to restore resident trust that eminent domain will only be used as a last resort. And the report recommends implementing a five-year moratorium on the use of eminent domain on residential dwellings for the purpose of economic development. Um, eminent domain is a means by which um, a government can take private property for a public purpose um, with just compensation. And it, or the courts over the years have allowed eminent domain to also be used for public projects that are for the purpose of economic development. And what this report is saying is to have a moratorium on eminent domain when it is used for economic development. Uh, the report suggests identifying alternatives to eminent domain, establishing more transparency around the use of eminent domain, and establish more justice-oriented remedies and forms of compensation for any instance in which it must be used. Sophia, just a quick question from the chat. Um, yes. Could you, could you give an example of deferred maintenance? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, deferred maintenance would be um, a roadway surfacing. Um, it's maintenance that hasn't been done in a in a very long time. Um, is is and so examples could be um, roadway maintenance that hasn't been done um, at, to the point where the facility is somewhat deteriorated. That's deferred maintenance. Thank you. Yes. And deferred maintenance often happens because of lack of resources. So it's certainly certainly not something that, that we like here at the city, um, but it, it happens when, when resources are in short supply. Um, the next policy uh, recommendation is fair chance housing. The goal of fair chance housing is to ensure access to housing for those with criminal records. Um, under this type of policy, background checks would be prohibited as a condition of lease or mortgage qualification. Early data shows these programs can also reduce homelessness. Um, City of Oakland has such a program. And um, notably, you know, already um, this type of program exists in the hiring process um, for public agencies. Um, but this policy is advocating that it be established for housing access as well. The next recommendation is a uh, is tax increment financing or TIF to pay for anti-displacement activities um, through an automatic set aside. So I know that sounds very um, sort of bureaucratic and jargony. Um, so I'll try to uh, decipher it. The goal is to finance anti-displacement policies and other city goals using tax increment financing. And the tax increment financing is a local government financing method to apply future tax revenue 
to the cost of current development and infrastructure projects. The revenue is generated by the increase in property values generated by the new development. And this type of financing mechanism was used um, and with redevelopment agencies. Um, so it, it tended to get a bad name because of that, but it is still can be a useful tool. The next one is uh, rent stabilization, conversion uh, restrictions, and affordable in perpetuity designations. Um, and these are all, um, the goal here is to maintain rental housing affordability. So this is a multifaceted program that calls for implementing a rent stabilization program in Fresno. Such a program would um, allow the landlord to set the rent, but would um, limit the uh, amount of increases that can occur. Um, in addition, the policy suggests improving public notice for condominium conversions when apartments are converting to condominiums to consider community opportunity to purchase programs. And those are programs in which um, if a uh, multifamily uh, development is for sale that a community organization, a nonprofit could purchase it and could maintain it um, as affordable in perpetuity. Um, additionally, the program calls for extending timelines of rental unit affordability covenants. And so um, the city has its own stock of uh, housing units that are affordable because they have affordability covenants on them. And the amount of rent that can be charged to the tenant is limited. And typically those covenants expire in 30, anywhere between 30 and 55 years. So this um, program is um, proposing that units maintain their affordability in perpetuity. The um, next program is called the Here to Stay Affordability Index. And the goal is to ensure that the index used to qualify households for affordable housing benefits reflects the local market and displacement risk. Um, so the recommendation is to establish a Fresno specific here to stay affordable affordability index, which takes into account displacement burden in addition to median income and cost of living. And finally, hold on just one moment. Um, finally, the recommendation is the Department of Anti-Displacement and Homelessness Intervention. Um, so establishing a new department within City Hall with the goal of reducing displacement and eradicating homelessness. And this department would implement anti-displacement policies and programs, would research, fund, track, and evaluate programs that are implemented to reduce displacement and homelessness to coordinate with city departments and partner agencies to prevent homelessness and assist with transition to permanent housing and staff the anti-displacement task force. Do we have another question or two? We do. Okay. Um, so we got one from Marina. Um, it was, please break down um, affordable in perpetuity, as well as does this include home ownership? Okay. Um, so affordable, I am loosely using the state and HUD definitions of affordable um, when we talk about this. So um, HUD defines affordability in terms of the um, average median income, and it's usually 80% of the average median income or below. So that's what is typically meant by affordable. And in perpetuity means forever. More questions? The other one was, does this include home ownership? Oh, right. Um, I think it could. Um, there are other um, programs. I think this that particular um, program, and I can go back 
to it. Um, I believe is targeted toward rental units. Um, actually, it was a couple back. It was affordable in perpetuity. Um, I believe that this was targeted mainly toward rental units because um, it references covenants that are on units. Um, but there are other programs or other policies in the Here to Stay report that talk about home ownership, how to establish um, affordable home ownership in perpetuity. And one of those programs is the Community Land Trust. I believe that is the very first recommendation in the report. So you might wanna look at that if, um, if that interests you. Thank so, you. There is yes. one more question. Um, who is the Anti-Displacement Task Force? The Anti-Displacement Task Force is a 11-member um, task force that was created in 2018. It, is a, um, it was uh, created by resolution. The members are appointed by the mayor and approved by the city council. And they represent um, uh, developers, um, residential tenants and, um, res and merchants um, in areas that are likely to experience displacement. So most of the members are from, um, represent the downtown and Southwest Fresno area. And they meet, they have public meetings and they meet um, right now on an as needed basis. Anything else in the queue? Yeah, we have um, one more question from Brandy and then it uh, looks like Janice has her hand up and we did get a question um, from Kimberly. So okay. uh, is there more detail on how we can ensure the anti-displacement and homeless department are coming from a position of hearing from the affected demographic, like the homeless and advocating for them? basically ensuring that the department is actively hearing from those at risk of displacement and homelessness and those currently homeless. Yeah, I think that's an excellent um, concern. And I think that that would be a, a great one to bring up in, in the breakout sessions. We are going to be, uh, your facilitators are gonna be taking notes and you can write your own notes. So um, I think that's a, a great um, concern to bring up. Great, and then would you like um, me to have Janice unmute herself to ask her question? Please. Absolutely. All right, Janice, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, I think I've done that. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, my question is, there is a state rent control as well as um, a no cause eviction. And I noticed that this is in this report as well. How does this coincide or dovetail with what's already in existence? It, um, you know, I think that will be up to us, all of us to, you know, decide what, um, what more beyond the state uh, requirements is needed here. So we, you know, we'd love to hear from you on that. And um, I would suggest that you, you voice your ideas in the breakout sessions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Janice. We have um, two more questions. Sophia, would you like to hear them? Yes, please. All right. So um, first is, can you repeat, repeat that? A community land trust will reconcile the cost of home ownership in implementing rent stabilization? Um, a little bit of refinement is needed there. Uh, community land trusts are, um, are described on, I think, page 44 of the Here to Stay report. And what they do, they are more an instrument of affordable home ownership in perpetuity. So not, not rent stabilization. With a community land trust, um, housing, a, a, a land trust can build or acquire housing and then... Um, and sell it basically to qualified homeowners, um, but ensure that they, when they want to then move on and sell the house, 
that they don't have a windfall profit. They can make some money on the home, but there are limits on how much. So that home then stays affordable to the next buyer. So the community land trust is an instrument for keeping home ownership affordable, is what I said. Thank you. And you're close, really close without looking, page 41. Okay, thank you for checking me on yep. that. Absolutely. And then uh, lastly from Marina, how can we serve on the on this board? I'm assuming me, that it's anti-displacement task force board is my guess. Yes. Marina, is that correct? Um, yes, what you would do is um, you can either contact me and I will get your name to the right person. Um, and my email is going to appear on the last slide when we get there. Or you can contact the um, Fresno City Clerk and ask um, to be, you know, let them know that you're interested in the anti-displacement task force. Thank you. And then we have one more question before you want to take that before we move on. Sure. Okay, here we go. So are any considerations being thought of, and this is from Lola, are any considerations being thought of for landlords with property maintenance, providing clean and safe properties with limited rental restrictions? Yes, um, Lola, I think that's something we need to hear about from you. We'd like to know when we get into our breakout sessions, you know, we know that in this meeting, there are um, people who are, are tenants and renters, there are people who are landlords, um, perhaps like yourself. And, and the purpose of this is to kind of share what our experience is um, and, and try to understand what these policies are recommending and how, how you would go about it. So um, I think that that's relevant information that should be shared in the breakouts. Sophia, if we could just pause for a brief moment. Um, our Spanish interpretation channel is having a bit of trouble. So I've been talking to our uh, interpretation uh, team and they are actually sending in a sub interpreter so that we can make sure that that's running smoothly. So we'll just okay. give them a couple of moments to log on and then I'll do all the, all the clicking of buttons to make sure that everyone is in the correct place. That's great. I think I, but help is on the way. So yes, no help is on the way. I think he just, I think he just entered. Okay, one Do a click, click, click. We're not seeing them. If our uh, Spanish interpreter sub could please write in the chat so that I can identify you. I'll go ahead and assign you to the Spanish interpretation channel. Okay, there we go. One moment, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna update it. Okay, and then just give me one moment. I'm going to go ahead and Tanya, I'm going to have you be a co host so that you're able to unmute yourself. And it'll take me one moment. Okay, I'm hoping that that worked one moment while I check it out. Good? Yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, are we are we good to go? Good to continue? Okay, thanks so much. Any more questions, Drew? Um, one question was, do we have builders and developers on? That's from Kimberly. Um, I, I don't know, um, but you will find out in your, in your breakout sessions. Okay, and I think in the interest of time, I'm gonna move it along. Um, we are just about to get into our breakout sessions. Um, there is one more additional policy that was recommended. Um, 
and it is environmental justice and climate resiliency planning with the goal of protecting Fresno, Fresno residents from a natural disaster or extreme weather. Um, the recommendation is to initiate an environmental justice emergency management plan. Everything okay, Marisela? Okay, just checking. Okay, um, so now we are going to um, get you ready to go into your breakout session. Um, just a little uh, con or sort of goals for what you're doing there. Um, we hope that um, it will increase the understanding of the policy ideas for you to have a chance to talk about them. You'll listen and learn from each other. You'll identify where more information is needed. We really want to know. Um, we hope you'll suggest ideas related to the policies. And you will have a facilitator, um, a city staff facilitator, and their role is to keep the conversation going and draw you out. Um, they are not subject matter experts. So um, just a little bit of background there. And the questions that you will be working on in your breakouts are these. Um, and of course, any other uh, direction that you end up going is fine. We just uh, want folks to have a chance to share ideas um, about these policies. So um, you'll have until about seven o'clock and we'll be doing time checks. I will be floating from breakout to breakout. And when you report back, you'll need to designate, um, we hope some of you will volunteer to be a reporter for your group. Um, and we're, we will want to hear what the highlights um, of your discussion were, any areas of agreement or disagreement, and any questions that you had. So with that, um, Maricela, would you like to uh, start telling folks how, how the breakouts are gonna work? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and assign everybody to a room. Uh, breakout room A is going to go ahead and be our Spanish designated breakout room. So if you are a Spanish speaker, uh, please raise your virtual hand. And if you don't know where that button is, alternatively, you can write in the chat or you can just wave on screen. That also works. So I'll give you folks uh, a couple of moments to find that button. So raise your hand if you need to be placed in the Spanish interpretation room. Really? One moment. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay, I'm assigning you folks to the room and I'll lower your hand as I assign you. Perfect. Let me see. Okay. Anyone else that needs to be in the Spanish interpretation room? Already. Okay. And then now, if we could have our Hmong speakers please raise their virtual hand. Um, Madi, did you see a, a Carlos? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Seeing none. Already in our Punjabi speakers, if there are any in the room, if you could please go ahead and raise your virtual hand, type in the chat, or wave. Give us a big wave. I'll try to see you go on the screen. There's only so many they can fit on my screen. Alrighty. Alrighty, and now I'm going to go ahead and assign everybody else. The way that this is going to work is you're going to go ahead and be assigned to a breakout room. It'll just automatically disperse you into that breakout room. And um, you don't have to press any buttons. However, when you do come back to the main, uh, main room after the breakout session has ended, what you're going to go ahead and do is you are actually going to select the interpretation channel all over again because it will not 
automatically place you back into the interpretation channel that you selected at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, so everyone should be assigned to a room. So you're gonna go ahead and be teleported out to your breakout rooms. And then after that, we will see you here in the main room. Okay, is everyone ready Marty? to be teleported? Oh, go ahead. Mari, I, yes. I think Carlos Morales wanted to be um, in the Spanish breakout and I still see him. Oh, okay, let me try to undo that then. One moment, Carlos. Do you see what room I accidentally placed Carlos in? Um, I just see him with us still. Oh, uh, in the breakout room? We're not in the breakout room yet. So oh, okay, I thought he would disappear if he was. Oh, was oh no, sorry. once I go ahead and hit the button, then everyone sorry. will go ahead and sorry. go into the room. No worries, I thought, oh no, what did I do wrong? Okay. Alrighty, okay. I'm going to go ahead and open all the rooms. And also, if you see a blue banner at the top of the screen, that's me sending a message out with time checks. I'll also pop into everybody's rooms just to let you know when we're halfway through 10 minutes. And then at the very end, maybe I'll be able to get into each room in time and let you know that your time is going to end. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks, okay. everybody. You're still with us and we have some kind of uh, sharing to do and, and a little wrap up. So don't go away. All right, does this look like everybody, Maricela? Not quite no. yet. There are about five seconds remaining. All right. Aha, here come lots more people. We should do a countdown like New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> and as a reminder to everyone, now that everyone is back in the main session, please reselect your interpretation channel. And again, that's the globe that will appear at the bottom of your screen. And then you'll select your preferred language. Okay, well, um, we'd like to do a little sharing, just some quick highlights. We don't have a lot of time. Um, uh, but we do have 17 minutes, so um, that would be a couple of minutes per group and, and then some wrap up. I'm going to give you, um, we do want to do a poll um, with you quickly before you leave. So I'm going to um, call on the different breakout groups just to give us some highlights, any areas of agreement or disagreement, and I'll call on group A. Is that Stephen and Mike? Correct. Yeah. Um, the, we didn't make it through all the policies. However, we did get some good feedback on the ones we were able to cover. Um, we thought that uh, for the cargo freight and revenue tax, like it may not be as much of a good idea as we think because these trucks, even though they might be imposed a tax, that might not be enough to stop them or, or reduce their usage um, which releases more uh, emissions into the communities and it creates negative health impacts. Um, so that policy wasn't necessarily favored. Um, for the public works prioritization, um, we feel like there are some communities, um, the older communities, disadvantaged communities, um, which are really just being ignored. And there's some communities that are only 20 years old, but they're having all their roads repaved. Meanwhile, in the disadvantaged areas, you know, it's nothing and the roads are horrible. So the city really needs to address the equity issue and invest in our disadvantaged areas. Um, skipping over to uh, eminent domain, um, there, there is some fear, but not as much uh, as in the past, but we feel like the city should acknowledge past harms that were done and, um, we sh and the city should take steps to correct the wrongs that were done in the past. Um, for fair chance housing, um, it was said that, you know, there's already some places that rent without background checks, um, but as, as comments were made in the group, uh, it kind of agrees with previous studies that were done and that sometimes, or there's a lot of prejudice out there and um, people of color would be more impacted by these, in, or by these background checks. And it's simply not fair. And a lot of people, you know, they may have made mistakes in the past, but they're trying to correct themselves and do better for the future. And 
um, being discriminated against um, by a previous mistake that they may have made, you know, it's just not fair. Um, so uh, they agree with the fair chance housing. And then for the uh, tax increment financing, uh, the group did think it was a great idea if the money that's generated stays in the community and the community gets a say on how that money is used. Cool. Um, thank you for that summary, concise. Um, let's see, how about group B, Lachey? Absolutely. Um, Jacob from our group wanted to go. Could we have somebody unmute him? Hey, -oh. Okay, oh. group, group B. Um, we had um, some community advocates and a really gracious landlord dealing with our rabble rousing. Um, and we talked about things like the cargo and freight prohibition um, and talking about um, maybe the possibility of uh, rerouting to kind of help deal with some of those things because even if there is a tax, there's still emissions and it makes things difficult. Um, we had, uh, let's see, um, public works prioritization, um, making sure basics are covered is important. The existing business or the stipends that are involved with it also really important to, to save some, um, some uh, um, small businesses, um, especially small businesses of color while, uh, while construction is happening. We talked about um, mobility transportation prioritization, um, balancing the need to make sure that things are fixed, but also why should we not be providing walkability and access to, to these neighborhoods too? Like if they're behind, why would we not do that? And talking about some, some cheap ways like restriping and bollards that we could create some, um, some affordable ways while we're adding um, infrastructure that's not there um, putting some walkability in at the same time. We talked about um, eminent domain moratorium, talking about how it should help families at work, talking about Prop 13, um, talking about using eminent domain to take um, housing from slumlords and keep it habitable and safe, um, and also making sure that um, eminent domain is keeping um, uh, certain uh, developers from plowing and redeveloping large areas. Fair chance housing, yes, 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 from a lot of folks, concerns from some of the landlords in the room um, about how they would be able to protect themselves um, and about how it's not really black and white from everybody in the room and that's a difficult balance to strike. Um, and I think the last thing we got to was rent stabil stabilization um, which we spent some time on um, making sure there's no predatory evictions um, that are kind of bucking rent stabilization, um, making sure a lot of us were talking about making sure that um, small landlords and big landlords are held to the same standard. Um, because from a landlord perspective, if you're a small landlord having to do the thing and then seeing all these big companies not having to do the thing it feels like a penalty on them, and that's not fair, especially when there's such gratuitous violations by these huge, com huge companies that aren't being held accountable. And I think that's it. Really awesome group. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Thank you, Jacob. Um, what are, are we on group C? Yeah. Who wants to report from group C? I think that's our group. I think that would be Lola. Okay. Hi, Lola. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so we had a real good group where we started with the um, cargo freight and some of the great ideas that I thought were um, planting trees and bushes along Jensen and um, making breathable, cleaner air uh, because the trucks are going to come. I don't know if they can be rerouted, but if you reroute them, are they going to affect another neighborhood? Um, and then also with the rerouting, um, limit the time of travel, maybe like certain times in the morning. Um, and then really the, the final question, 
question was, how do you enforce prohibition? Is it even enforceable? With fair chance um, housing, we talked about um, not just having fair chance housing in low income communities or the west side, but also throughout the city. Why can't we have fair chance housing on the north side or other communities? Sprinkle it around the city. Um, it's, you know, that's what you call true justice, allowing people to live anywhere. Um, and then the basic infrastructure um, being taken care of before putting the shiny new objects like the bike lanes and the walk paths, but take care of the sidewalks um, that where there's no sidewalks, there's still lots of neighborhoods where there's just dirt or whatever. Um, and then shutting down businesses and what, what are they gonna do for those businesses? Creating some type of stipend or something when construction is going on, um, you know, and then uh, we went into the mobility, mobility for the disabled, getting on buses during construction time. What can we do? Can we re reroute some of these buses, but make it accessible for all children and seniors that still want to ride public transportation, um, that for people that know how to navigate throughout the city. Um, expediting uh, expediting deferred maintenance before adding new things is something that really, I think that was a big one right there. So residential eminent domain moratorium. Uh, someone had said that there was a moratorium that these people were, I mean, there was an eminent domain and they didn't do anything until many, many years later. And so if, if it ever has to happen, um, have a timeline. And then these people are displaced and then 40 years later, they do something with the land that has happened. Um, what kind, and then the injustice for black and brown people where this is continues to happen in their communities of eminent domain. Okay. Uh, oh, and then allow them to negotiate a market rate where they can still purchase a property somewhere else. Because a lot of times they want you to just take what they're offering. Um, and then tr we talked about transitional housing. Uh, we support that also for fair housing, for a chance housing. I don't know why that's over here too. Um, tax increment would make it harder on the poor if taxes raised for infrastructure. Um, so we were not for that one. Okay, rent stabilization, small, oh, small property owners, um, rent stabilization, how it affects them different from a large developer. A lot of our small property owners are seniors and to not be a slumlord, to be a good landlord, they're on fixed incomes. And if they can't raise the rent to a place where they can still maintain the property, it affects the, um, the small property owner and sometimes they have to sell. Okay, anyone want to add? Cause I, you know, I had notes scribbled everywhere. That sounds great. Um, you know, we are getting close to time. Um, so I'm gonna ask, that the remaining groups, if they can really highlight the, the items that got sort of the most interesting discussion. Um, so group D, Sean, what were the highlights? Maybe in just one minute. Okay, highlights. Um, let's see, what which would be good ones to go through. Uh, fair housing, um, this, was, this was a good discussion. Um, we're talking about, uh, Let's see. Um, sorry, my notes are a little, a little disjointed as well. <laughs> but uh, um, there's some questions about vouchers. Um, you know, can can those still be used in these programs? Um, you know, for I know there's crim criminal questions. We had a, a good one about you know, do sex offenders still count 
Um, and Sophia, that's when she was actually in our room and mentioned that Oakland does have an exemption for Megan's law when it comes to criminals and background checks. So that does still pertain. Um, let's see, uh, real quick for, I'll jump back to the uh, transportation or the, uh, sorry, the deferred funding. Um, we were lucky enough to have Andrew on, on it on the call and he discussed kind of some of the public works current priorities. Um, he mentioned that they do do a uh, maintenance on on pavements depending on their conditioning, but um, they also have a lot of grants that include low income areas. So that's where uh, some some of those are addressed. Um, let's see for stabilization, rent stabilization was a good also topic. Um, there, there was some questions, you know, for the difference between landlords that are mom and pop that have, you know, mortgages that they also have to pay, and and um, you know, if if rent controls on them, they might not be able to make it, or if the taxes go up, or or you know, cost of being a landlord themselves is a big issue. But then also, there's issues of people being displaced after paying their their rent on time for for decades, and then they still get evicted. Um, so there, there's thoughts on those, but generally that there's a consistent or a, a consensus in a group that uh, the landlords that don't really care about a lot of those things tend to be on the corporate side. So there'll be very large organizations that own several properties and don't really consider like a land, a local mom and pop landlord that you can just text in and kind of communicate that way. So a um, little, little gray area in that, um, but those were our highlighted topics. Thank you. About Group E, Casey's group. Yeah, so Esther, I don't know if you're available to give our report. If you want to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, thumbs up. Okay. Sorry about that. It's doing a few things at one time. So let me get back to my Jamboard here. Um, yeah, so we didn't get through all of the, the, um, the topics. So I will try and hit a few of the highlights here. Um, on, I mean, a lot of our discussion was about like trying to understand um, the more to the policies and bringing up questions around big questions that would be important to answer around these policies. Um, so around the mobility, um, the cargo and freight one, I think there was just concern around like, is this exist? Is this applying to existing or just to new um, cargo freight? That sort of thing. Um, where where are the areas um, in Fresno? Like, how are those areas going to be defined um, that get the the benefits from a taxation and stuff like that? Um, on the public works prioritization. Um, we heard that um, there is the ATP plan that gets updated every five years, and it would be really good to add um, displacement burden analysis into the next update. Um, I think we're four years into that update, so that would be good. Um, and then um, we just had like some thoughts around cautioning the moratorium on stopping any development that is like really needed in, in much needed areas um just for sake of like keeping things moving forward um and not wanting to stop good infrastructure and and that sort of thing that's ha happening um i'm gonna skip around a little bit to the housing stuff um talked about the eminent domain um really what impact does this have is really the big question. Um, is, is this being used currently? Has it been being used? And what effects would it have um, in the next five years? Like really would it make a difference in the next five years? Would projects pile up and then after five years, there'd be like a crash or would it really not matter? So there was just more, um, more questions around that. Um, fair chance housing, um, a lot of discussion about this, really wanting to see that there's like more transparency um, between landlords and tenants on in the process. 
so that um, so people know exactly what is required or what is not required. Um, somewhere there's just we talked about a lot of pros and cons to um, either having background checks or not having background checks and the effects, um, the positive and negative effects that these this can really have on individuals, families, neighborhoods, communities, and our entire city, um, really. Um, and then for the anti-displacement, automatic set aside, um, we really needed to, just wanted some definition about what those programs are, who's involved. Um, we also heard that this can be a little bit tricky. The TIFs can be a little tricky when, um, the ec when economics kind of take a downturn um, and there's not that revenue coming in. Um, so talked a little bit about that. And then the rate rent staple stabilization conversation um, talked about uh, the, the current, what AB 1482 currently does and what it doesn't do. Um, and just, um, yeah, I think my my Google just signed me out of this. So um, I can't get to the rest of the notes. Um, so that's that's what I got for now. Sounds like I'm muted. Okay, it is 7.31 right now. Um, if people have a few more minutes to hang in here, I'm guessing we could hear from, still have two more groups to hear from, and then just a little bit of wrap up. Um, so hopefully we'd be done in 10 minutes. If you can stick with us, that'd be great. Uh, group F, that is Drew. Correct, do we have um, Ms. Mirna here? She was going to be our report back, correct? I see her there. Let's see if we can unmute her. Erin, are you there? All right, well. Oh, is she talking? I guess, is anybody else? Let's see. Sam, do you want to report back? I think you got it. You want me to do it? All right. Because you have the jam board in front of you, and I don't. <laughs> All right. So our mascot, first off, was Pikachu wearing a, a lion's costume, just so everybody's aware. Um, I think there was general consensus in terms of the cargo and freight. We wanted to make sure that there was a consideration to the land use, especially in disadvantaged communities, um, and where that freight was going through. And it seemed to primarily be in south neighborhoods and disadvantaged communities. And so there should be some kind of separation between industrial and residential. I think that was definitely a common sentiment. Public works prioritization um, idea came out is that construction permit should include timelines to complete, especially since there's a lot of projects that are ongoing downtown and in Southwest that have continuously been going on and that mobility mobility is a issue for those on the edge of town. So as we expand, we need to ensure that we have access for all in terms of public transportation, walking and biking as we grow. Um, and we need to make sure that uh, if one idea was that if maintenance is allowed to be deferred um, and for basic usability, that funding should go towards some of the small impacted businesses to offset some of those revenues. Um, and then the idea that public transit can be run at a loss because for the for the general good for the public, especially those who need it. Um, for the additional recommendations. Um, for transportation prioritization system, I guess there was kind of a crossover too in the public works is that there is a definitely a need for improvements in a lot of areas, um, um, especially in Chinatown with um, some, it was mentioned that there was deferred maintenance of pipes that were over a hundred years old. Um, we didn't get a chance to go over all of them, uh, residential eminent domain. Um, so there was definitely a idea that this was good when it ter in terms of economics, but that um, eminent domain needed to remain as a tool that the city can use to prevent um, warehousing units or creation of blight and to hold ban bad landlords accountable. Um, and so some the idea that slumlords should be held accountable through the city um, 
by the city through eminent domain. So how do you balance the use of it versus not using it? Um, fair, um, fair chance housing, there was back and forth on this. A, a, um, a property owner, landlord said that they use it to protect existing residents, but it was brought up that, you know, that um, this is the same as taking the boxes off of employment applications and that um, primarily this would affect people with prior drug arrests and a majority of the folks um, um, that are this right now is harming those with a prior drug arrest. Um, rent stabilization, that's the last one we got to. It was definitely a robust conversation. We had um, Sam, who was from New York City and worked on a tenant board and talked about it being one of the single most important programs to keeping the city, uh, the city that New York City affordable to working class residents. Um, and it covered over 100,000 units. Also a consideration for some of the, um, as we heard earlier, some of the smaller property owners, because there was a fear that property owners would lose their property. Um, and so is there a way um, that this could potentially be paired uh, with just cause evictions? And could there be a consideration for waiver for historical homes? Um, and that, you know, the uh, common sentiment was that at the moment, the rents are definitely too high, as well as the selling um, point was made that families making minimum wage with two family incomes make an estimated 60000 with the rental and mortgage are 40 to 45% of the income. Anything else to add, Sam? Or anybody else? Um, I think you got most of it. I think the most important thing about rent stabilization though, affordability programs that involve federal funding often can't house undocumented people rent stabilization as a blanket property price point regulation system covers everybody. So that's an important thing to consider. When you regulate the base rents, you're protecting everybody, including the units that aren't directly covered because it creates an expectation in the market of what is and isn't acceptable, but it has to be paired with just cause eviction or it just simply doesn't work. Thank you. Some good experience in the room here, um, all around. How about our last breakout uh, group was G from Aubrey. Hello, um, I'm gonna be the reporter for my group. Uh, we had a lot of good conversation, uh, just some highlights um, from topics that we talked about. Uh, we talked about TIF for anti-displacement. Uh, we thought, my group thought that that was a good idea. Um, especially increasing the rent, I mean, the property taxes of uh, neighboring new and wealthier neighborhoods to help fund um, updating infrastructure in uh, the specific planning area. Uh, another hot topic was anti-displacement and homelessness intervention. Um, my group discussed about approaching this topic with dignity and um, approaching the people with dignity and partnering with qualified uh, community partners who are actively working on the forefront in this field to help guide us and shape policies um, for how we approach that. Uh, another um, highlight is we talked about public works and prioritization. Um, one of the major things was improving our current infrastructure. We had a major concern about Fax infrastructure, um, if, if there's enough shading structures for people or enough benches for people to sit um, to take the facts, and then as well as um, engaging with the public in a meaningful way, um, ensuring that we're able to reach people who we typically normally wouldn't be able to reach, um, just getting out there and getting as much information as we can for them uh, to develop any policies that will benefit uh, their community. And then one of the last major things we talked about is environmental justice, um, increasing the green space, uh, shade and safer routes in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Um, well, it sounds like we've had um, some great conversations. Uh, we really appreciate your participation. And I'm going to bring up the screen just really quick here to, um, to, uh, wrap us up tonight as far as, again, reminding you of next steps. Can you see my, my screen? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, we wanted to know, so, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, the purpose of these um, sessions is to really kind of start fleshing out additional questions and hearing what others have to say. Um, 
but eventually we would really like you to fill out the survey um, uh, that accompanies the Here to Stay report. Um, and in preparation for that, we just kind of want to take a little, a little temperature check right now and ask you to tell us right now um, which mobility and connectivity policy would be most helpful to your community. So um, we have this one, and then we'll ask you about the, the um, legal protections category. And Sophia uh, actually just launched the poll and they both should show up on your screen. So for the second question, you may just need to scroll down just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and read uh, the first question, which mobility and connectivity policy would be most helpful to your community, the cargo and freight prohibition and revenue tax, public works prioritization and mobility justice, or the additional recommendation. Uh, let's see. It got cut off, but mobility conditions, transportation, prioritization system, uh, and you can select up to three. I realize there are only three there, so maybe just select one for that one. I'm realizing that I set it up that way. Uh, and then for the second question, it says, which regulations and legal protections policy would be most helpful to your community? Residential eminent domain moratorium, fair chance housing, TIF for anti-displacement automatic set-aside, rent stabilization, conversion restrictions, and affordable in perpetuity designations. Ooh, it's moving around our results. I can see them. Here to stay affordability index, Department of Anti-Displacement and Homelessness Intervention, or that additional recommendation for the environmental justice and climate resiliency planning. And again, you can select up to three and I'll give folks a, a couple of moments to fill out that poll. I realize that there's a lot of places to click and a lot of scrolling that needs to go on. So I'll give y'all some extra time. And also if you're unable to uh, figure out the poll, feel free to also put it in the chat if you feel comfortable with that. Alrighty, we just about have everyone's answers in, so I'll go ahead and share the results. Can everybody see that? Yes, perfect. Alrighty, so for question number one, it looks like 61% of folks chose public works prioritization and mobility justice. So that one seems to be what gained the most support. And then for the second question, Let's see, 72% of folks said rent stabilization, conversion restrictions, and affordability and perpetuity designations. Let's see what followed that, fair chance housing. And in third place, let's see the Department of Anti-Displacement and Homelessness Intervention. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing those results and pass it back to Sophia. Thank you, Maricela. And thank you everyone for participating in the poll. Um, just a, a little, little advertisement here before we, um, we end, the city does have um, emergency rental assistance funds available for you if you are behind on your rent. Um, and you can call 621-6801 or go to fresno.gov slash E-R-A-P to get more information. So we just wanted to mention that. And that brings us to our schedule. Our next meeting will be a week from today, Thursday, same place, same time, 530, um, focusing on uh, direct services and alternatives to eviction and increasing dignified housing options. So um, please join us then. We would love to see you again. And if you have questions, you can email me directly or you can send comments um, about this or questions to transformfresno.com slash here to stay. So 
with that, um, we're ready to close. Any last comments or questions for the group? Just the one request to go ahead and put your contact information in the chat. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Thank you. There we go. All righty. Well, we thank you all very much for participating with us tonight and we'll um, hope to hear from you soon and maybe see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.